The Atlas Mountains, these 4,000 meter high plus peaks, mark the edge of the classical world. The foothills lie a mere 40 miles to the south of Marrakesh, with its medieval Medina, souks, hustle and bustle, a world away from the one I just left. The sadness of goodbyes was quickly replaced by the wonder, sights and sounds of the adventure to come. Hiya guys, hope you're all keeping well. Out of the Malvins today, getting a bit of uh, hill fitness in the legs, or keeping it up at least. Uh, yes, the granite hills of Malvins, and uh, kind of my local hill playground really. But uh, yeah, we're off to um, off to Marrakesh, North Africa next week, and we're going to uh, have a go at uh, climbing uh, Tubkal in the High Atlas Mountains. So uh, the more the more meters I can get in the uh, in the legs, the better, because it's over <laughs> well over four thousand meters high. So uh, yeah, so yeah, join me uh, on this exciting expedition up Mount Tubkal. And that in the Atlas. So see you in Marrakesh. All the best. After picking up five of their adventurers, John and I couldn't help but look in awe at the desert and the mountains looming ahead. There it is. <clears throat> Actually, quite cool. It's um, the very end of April, and uh, kind of expecting a sort of a really hot, sweaty trek, which it probably will be. But the actual temperature is pretty low, so exciting stuff. So uh, get up to three three thousand two hundred meters today. Uh, I think it's around about a ten k trek from here to there, give or take six miles, maybe a bit more. I'm probably wrong. The Atlas Mountains, exciting stuff. Bring it back. Cool, then we're underway. Hello. So we're just leaving Imir, working our way through the suburbs. Absolutely beautiful, it really is. Donkeys and mules are extensively used as pack animals in the Atlas, and while not petted, were treated well, and are used just like Sherpas in the Himalaya. This provides well-paid local employment for the Berber people of Morocco. As we enter the National Park of Mount Tubgal and its surrounding peaks, we quickly happen upon the uh, gendarmerie um, post which checks passports and that you're with a guide. Hi you guys. Wow. Just coming up to 2,500 meters. Uh, 
lovely lunch to eat salad. Uh, in, I think it's called Sharmazoo. Sharmashoot. It's like a small village with a shrine, painted stone. Uh, wonderful vistas. Heading into the cloud now. And expected uh, minus 15 tonight. So it's going to be a cold one tomorrow morning when we go for the summit push. But that was okay. Pays his tax in, if I'm honest, for me. I'm a bit of a dawdler. So it's uh, unusual to be part of a team. But uh, all good. Bring it back. Hi guys, just coming up to 27 uh, meters, that is 2,700 meters. Uh, all going okay. Obviously, the pace has slowed a bit now for, by everybody really in the team. Uh, altitude started to have an effect. Slow steps, steps, steps even. Got another 350, 400 meters to the refuge. I'd go in. <coughs> it's not technical, but it's uh, you know it's a high yeah. Uh, you know it's a, it's a good old trek hike up to the refuge. No doubt about that. Not to be underestimated. Uh, but uh, we're all enjoying it. What a different landscape to the Alps. It's a much more arid, or at least it is at this stage anyway. I'm sure that it'll become more alpine as we get higher beyond the, uh, the refuge. It's really cool to be high there. The highest I've been since, ooh, Zug Spitz. Yeah. Two or three years ago with Sky by the Ryan Town. That was a good that was a good trek that was. Probably still go down as my favourite one I've ever done. Good memories. Bring it back. Basic but efficient touring facilities are dotted along this trek, which is a bonus. Wow, get in there. Refuge is ahead. I'll spin you around in a sec so you can have a look. It's quite a big refuge, it was all built by the French uh, Mountaineering Club, I think in 1923, something like that. And it's most welcome. We just uh, just pushed through 3,000 metres back there. So that's cool, pleased with that. Feeling okay. One foot in front of another, that's all we can do, isn't it? Here's the refuge. Morning guys. I barely started this morning. Uh, ended last night with a good meal. <coughs> and obviously organise your uh, kit. We were doing it this morning. Oh, we were doing it this morning.
not easy. Over 30,000 feet now. I can see the summit of the pyramid. And I'll just cock us in at 4,167 meters. I think it's 30,600 feet. Whereabouts it's going to take. <sighs> Altitude's kicking in now, man. Small steps, big breath. Scrambly sections on there as well. No, not hard scrambling, but you know, we've had the altitude to it. My goodness, taxing. The views are made, amazing. I'll get to the top, give you 360. Bring it back. With the drama of the summit pushover, it was time to say goodbye to the Emerfuge. This was a special moment for me, as our guide allowed us to hike back to a mill, pretty much alone. Solitude in the Atlas, beautiful. Hiya guys. Yeah, apologies, there wasn't a lot of filming on the actual uh, climbing phase. We were only there to check in, and obviously the, the hike out. <clears throat> but um, yeah, and obviously we was three hours under lights, so uh, that instantly uh, makes things difficult anyway, filming with my rig at least. But um, yeah, it was great, hard oh, going. Um, beautiful place, the, the Atlas. <clears throat> so that's sort of, I've done three now of the sort of the mounting building uh, phase, you know, Climbed in the Alps and the Tatra and now the Atlas and they were all filmed at, all formed at the same time by uh, Africa obviously slamming into Europe way back when that's really cool but uh, yeah it's up car yet 
brutal mountain, it really is. You know, it is a trekking peak, but there is three, you know, three, uh, what do you call, scrambles. Nothing heavy, but scrambles nonetheless. Uh, and you have the altitude, 4,173, I think. I'll put it above what the actual altitude is. About 30,600 feet. Um, you know, these, these scrambles become an issue. So yeah, thoughts. Um, yeah, you need to be in reasonable shape, no doubt about it. You know, you don't need to be an Olympic standard marathon runner, but you do need to be in reasonable shape. You need to be able to hike for long periods of time. Because the, uh, the trek in and out is quite arduous and quite long. Um, the actual climb itself, we did it in the three and a half hours up, three and a half hours down, which is reasonable time actually, but to be honest, we did quite well. It's freezing cold, it was about minus 25 with wind chill, absolutely frigid at the top of the summit. Uh, and the uh, 500 meters below it, there was a little snow, which did create a, a little bit of a palpitation there. I did have crampons and ice axe with me, but there was a little snow up there from recent falls, but it didn't really cause any problems. And in the main, there's not a lot of snow, it's melting fast now. Um, the little climb up on the last day of April, uh, but yeah, I'd recommend it, you know. Um, you know High Atlas Mountains, North Africa, Morocco, Kubkal, it's all great stuff. Highly recommended. And we went with a guide. You have to go with a guide here. There's no two ways about it. If you want to climb in the Atlas in Morocco, you have to have a guide. So uh, that was something new for me because I tend to do solos, as you know. It's all solo climbing, or with John or Sky or Antosh, you know, but not with a guide. But in this instance, you have to have a you have to have a guide. Bonjour. Hey. hey. <laughs> um. But uh, yeah, a great guide, great guide. Got us up safe, got us down safe. Highly recommended. Good food along the way as well. We lived like kings and queens. So uh, it's been a great adventure. It really has. I enjoyed it. So uh, yeah, I'll leave it there and uh, let you enjoy uh, some of the views of the High Atlas of Morocco in North Africa. Take care guys. Stay safe, yeah?